वॉट इज अपड इवनिंग लेट एज यूज डूड आई वॉज इन सपोज टू बी टूडे इज ईस्टर आई वॉज इन शो आई वॉज गन मेक इट बट थैंक यू गाइज फॉर कमिंग अ हैप्पी ईस्टर टू एवरी वन स्टिल सेलिब्रेटिंग एट एनी वन हैज डिनर प्लान टूडे होप फुल इट गोज ऑल वेल आई हैव कंक्लूडेड माई ईस्टर सेलिब्रेशन विद अ फुटबॉल मैच दैट्स वॉट वी आर डूइंग टूडे Hey bang bang hello aditya good evening all right two teams that i can't be bothered with but i have to watch because that's where my life's uh, basically ended up as a football fan so games about to kick off i hope they both lose but that's not going to happen so there you go think city to arsenal or i want arsenal to win i agree i agree. I can't believe I'm saying this, but even I also want to ask them to agree. Might have to miss few minutes. I'm watching Delhi. Was say, yeah, give me an update, man. What was it? It was a hundred and something for two, fourteen overs. God, I don't have. I have no desire to watch David Warner play cricket anymore. After after all the trauma he has caused me. I hope Delhi Capitals somehow lose today. That would be very nice. Done enough damage to our country. Oh boy! Oh, they're playing with the pointless left back, the one that I don't think is good at all. But let's see what he does today. Apparently, he's good, and he can play left back for Croatia. So, whatever that means, let's see. Even Macalis is a baller, yeah, man. Congratulations. He is a boy. It was a good deal, man. It was a very good deal. Can't lie, very good deal. Hundred sixty-one for four, seventeen point five. So are they gonna make, wait for four? Patirana came and did some damage. Two wickets in an over, if I'm not mistaken. Hello, Madhu. If I'm not mistaken, Patirana took two wickets in a in one over. I'm watching it on mute. Just keep tabs of the score. Now that they're easily gonna hit one eighty, aren't they? Unless someone bowls a nice, someone performs a nice bowling. He's offside, man. What are what's going on here? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I didn't think he dived either. Quite honestly, was that offside? That was an offside. What's going on here, man? I was wondering how was that allowed. Salah was shit, but he's world class player in a moments play. Listen, man. That's all you need in a tight title race. You need moments after game thirty, man. You know. You need moments in tight games when there are only eight games left in the season. Two Yorkers bowled. Yep. Oh, you're talking about right now. Okay. <clears throat> should get. They still should get one eighty, and I think one eighty is chaseable. Yeah. So. CSK. Here we go. Bernardo Silva. Draggy two players. Oh, he skinned one, and that was definitely a yellow card foul. That has to be a yellow card. Wow, he got away with the yellow. Ooh, that looked too uh, uh, deliberate to not be a yellow card. What the hell is Jesus doing? Seriously, can't believe they had to double team Bernardo Silva, who's not even that fast. Disappointing by Jesus, though. Disappointing by Jesus. Like it was really lazy defending, considering he was the second man. Zakaria, hi. Warner now has most T20 fifties equaling Gale, hundred and ten. Yeah, he's caused, like I said earlier, he's caused enough trauma to this country. Oh, this is looks like a really dangerous area. No yellow card, I know, ridiculous. But suppose it's too early in the game for it. Ready for ten hour live stream next week? <laughs> Don't remind me, dude. I'm still recovering from the trauma. Trauma that was the elimination chamber ma- uh, pay per view where there were four matches and it took four hours. Dude. Absurd. I, I still feel like I got robbed during the Royal Rumble and elimination chamber. 
there's no way the matches should have last the pay per view should have lasted that long for that few matches. Absolute absolute time suck that was both those pay per views. At least at least the elimination chamber one was at a reasonable time. Royal Rumble one was brutal, man. Five thirty in the morning. Yes, to simply uh, to answer your question quite shortly, uh, in in a short way, sorry, no, not looking, not ready for it. That wasn't clear. Nineteenth November. What's nineteenth November? Oh, don't remind me, dude. Please, dirty fellow. It was all over the bloody pitch that day, fielding and flying around. Drew and Becky. Oh, you're calling the winners? You think so? Hmm. Maybe. Becky Lynch was on the MMA Hour the on Wednesday. It was a nice interview. One fifty-one and thirty-one balls. Not not bad for the apprentice. Now the masters coming down in the next innings. Arsenal looking vulnerable. Yeah, but they always look vulnerable, don't they? They still managed to put four goals in on average in the last like couple of games. I have a feeling they're both going to concede no matter what, no matter how solid or not solid they look like. I feel like there are going to be goals both ways anyway. Now uh, Zakaria asked who won. Oh, oh sorry, who won elimination? Sorry, I didn't read that. Oh, yeah, Drew and uh, Drew and Becky Lynch. Yeah. Although I'm telling you, man, that was. At least Royal Rumble, you know, it's once a year. It's a real specialty novelty match. We didn't know who was going to make appearances. It's worth getting up in the morning for the surprise. But Elimination Chamber, man, seriously. The atmosphere, the atmosphere in Australia, however, I would say was fantastic. That was great. Just the card, man. They should have done so much more. The atmosphere is so great. They could have filled that card more, but. Seth was injured. They're trying to protect all their matches for WrestleMania. It was a timing issue, man. If this happened like in October or something, in the middle of nobody cares, it would have been a it would have been a great event. Man. They would have put they would have had at least two more matches. And depending on the quality of the matches, it would have been a great event. Just stretching it out, but because they were elimination chamber matches, it was just short. Oh my god, how hilarious would it be if Jesus scores? Hi. 178 for 5. Patirana gets his third punt out. Okay. What's your take on yesterday's masterclass against Brentford? You know what, dude? I've, I'll be very honest with you. I've seen some horrible matches we have played in the last 3 4 years. Rocky Rowcastle. Oh, this is David Rowcastle. Is it his death anniversary today? The Arsenal legend. Man, he was only 34 when he passed. Damn. Remember who you are, what you re- what you are and who you represent. Lovely, lovely words there by the Arsenal fans. David Rocky Rowcastle for all the Arsenal fans, all the non-Arsenal fans who don't know who that is. Uh, Arsenal ex-player. Oh, sorry, what was I saying? Ah, yes. Masterclass against Brentford. Listen, man, I'll be honest with you. It has to be one of the worst matches I've seen in a long, long time. Uh, I mean, we had, to, we had to at least stay on point, right? Listen, you know, next week Spurs might lose points, Aston Villa might lose points. It all ifs and buts. But considering we played after both of them, we knew what the job was. We almost got away with it. But here's the thing about almost getting away with it. Whether you almost get away with it or not, it doesn't equal deserving. Handball? Isn't that a handball? Oh, okay. It's a foul. Never mind. I was wondering how Nathan Naki was allowed to use his hand. Um, it was a terrible game, man. The fact that we did what we normally do, which we haven't done in recent games, which is concede within the next five minutes of the goal. There was literally 
9 minutes extra time they scored in the 99th minute so we had to basically hold out for a minute we couldn't they had so many shots on target they had uh, 80 touches in our box we had 13 they hit the post at least four times if i remember correctly great interception there by rodri bernardo silva Lays it off for De Bruyne, cross comes in, straight to Raya. 19 November, Warner scored 50 while fielding, seriously. I, to be honest, prefer waking up early and watching the game. EC was around 1pm, peak Indian household kiosk time, no peak. Yeah, but you know what the thing is, dude. I'm talking about like in terms, I get what you're saying, right? But in terms of like quality entertainment for the time you spend... I would rather watch a dull pay-per-view at 1, dude. Because at 5.30, especially like if you're streaming or, or whatever. Let's say you have work. Man, to get up early to watch a dud pay-per-view, it, it's a it, little depressing, dude. I remember like when we were watching Royal Rumble, everyone was so disappointed Cody won again. And listen, I am indifferent. I just enjoy watching the... the I just enjoy watching the matches, to be honest with you. Um... Storylines are secondary to me because I always just enjoy watching the matches from a young age. But uh, think about people who have to get up like me stream. Even if you don't think me, think about people who have like kids or have jobs and stuff. Man, They have to get up and watch that drawn out pay-per-view. I would rather it be Sunday. Honestly, I'd rather it be Sunday in the afternoon, dude. Honestly. That way, you know, if you if if it, if it drags you down, you can just watch something else. At 5.30 in the morning, you can't really watch something else and you can't go to sleep, dude. It's rough. It's rough. If the quality of pay-per-view was fine, then it's a different subject altogether. Man. That's that's the hard sell, honestly. And like I said, if this was done in September, October, I'm 100% sure the, the card would have been a lot better. In WrestleMania season, the pay-per-view just before, it was just a dis dis disadvantage to the Australian audience unfortunately it was never going to end well uh, in terms of a pay-per-view card and i remember we were complaining about the royal rumble and literally after the stream i i went and checked something maybe a couple of hours later a uh, shortest match card in royal rumble history i'm like shortest match card in royal rumble history and yet it took four hours like that's absurd it just stretch the th living hell out of it man Hi Nidesh, good evening. Prediction, <clears throat> prediction for this match, I assume, and not uh, not the uh, not the cricket. Uh, I'm hoping it's two one Arsenal, but quite honestly, it looks like City are going to win this game based on the first twelve minutes. Just to make things interesting, man, because if Man City Man City pulls ahead of this game, I don't know how much of a title charge it will be for the remainder. Ooh, sorry, it's been long, long. It's been a long three weeks. I don't know how uh, how much of a title challenger uh, title challenge will be the last eight weeks. I think it's more interesting if Arsenal win. Honestly, we might lose points because West Ham be uh, becomes prime Simeon Haram ball against us. Yeah, I don't know where they were against Aston Villa, dude. It would have been really appreciated yesterday if they if they did Haram ball because. We would have all caught up with Aston Villa instead of Aston Villa just maintaining a lead over both of us. But it didn't happen. Maybe they have six different types of foods in front of me. Elimination Chamber should always have a title on the See, again, Zakaria. It's not about it's not about one thing. It's about it's about the building of the whole card, man. The whole card as a whole was underwhelming. Which is again really, really sad because in my opinion, I thought that Australian crowd was fantastic. In fact, wherever they have gone recently, out, out of the blue, like, you know, random location, one-off events like Puerto Rico and all. I mean, the crowd has been the highlight, even I would say more than the matches. Like, the crowd have been so hungry for, you know, they waited so long for WWE that when they've come, they have just showed up in amazing droves. So a lot of these people will never actually travel to America to watch it, man. 
So whatever the price is in Australia or in Puerto Rico, people will pay because they know it's a once in a lifetime event. They don't know when the next time is going to happen. It's it's all well and good going. Yeah, we uh, you know gearing Triple H in the post event press conference. Go yeah, we got to come back soon. Bro, they said that about India. How long did they take? Eight years. Eight years is not soon, dude. Eight years is soon for someone who's like eighty years old. Eight years is not soon though. Like in in terms of sports cycle, eight eight years is forever, man. Uh, I remember I remember when uh UFC uh, stopped holding events in Brazil and then who held their first event back there. I think it was UFC. I want to say UFC Rio. It was one. I want to say it was UFC 146. I'm sure I've got that number wrong though. It was uh, Jose Aldo and Chad Mendes 2, I think. <gasps> oh, just landed right in front of Raya. Almost went through him. Yeah, so it took them 10 years, dude. And now, before the pandemic, they'd go at least once a year, if not more than once a year to Brazil. Because the fans are so hungry for it because they can't afford to come back. It's the same thing for it's the same thing for WWE. Like people go, yeah, we'll be back soon, and then show up eight years later. So the crowd in Australia deserved more, man. We deserved more, honestly, as well. But the crowd there definitely deserved more. Anyway, let's see. They said they're gonna come back again, so let's see. Let's see what they do next year, next time around. Maybe it'll be more fun. Who knows? CSK need one ninety two and twenty was damn man. They made more than I thought they would. 192, so what is that? 9.5 and over. Oof. Oh god. Pretty high. Pretty high for a chase. They should replace payback month to elimination chamber. Yeah, another thing I don't like what they do, man. They make survivor series, survivor series, war games. You know, I don't like that, man. Find that weird. War games was a thing on its own in NXT, and now because it was so successful, they have made it like a actual PLE event, which is which is fine. But why merge it with Survivor Series? Just have a bunch of Survivor Series matches like the good old days. It used to be so fun. Uh, people outside of the titles just make Survivor Series matches, dude. It used to be so great. Oh, they've added war games to it. It makes it more fun, but it also becomes very niche. Instead of having a bunch of survivor matches, they'll only have one or maybe two. So then survivor series war games, then there and then only doesn't make sense because it's like one match or two matches and there's eight match card. But it's called survivor series war games. It's weird. So yeah. Why are you predicting Arsenal win? Aren't they your rival? No, not anymore. Dude. Not since Wenger and Fergie retired, quite honestly. At least uh, not the same level of rival they used to be when Fergie and Wenger were at the helm. And I'm also predicting an Arsenal win to make the title race more, more interesting, man. Let's be honest. Becomes more interesting if Arsenal win because Arsenal then is still in the race. Watch out for Coop Miner's top players. Play 6 8 10. I was saying this on Mohawk stream the other day, man. After the Liverpool win, I went on Mohawk stream. I was there with uh, Doc uh, and uh, a couple of other United fans along with Mohawk. And I was saying the same thing. I was like, uh, back uh, back uh, like last season no the season before that the season before he went to Italy I was looking at Toyn Coop minus but nothing came to fruition then he moved to Italy he was doing well at PSV I believe it was right Eindhoven the Dutch league then I was looking at Orkun Kokchu but Orkun Kokchu has gone to Benfica and has like a hundred and something million clause on him or as I like to call it the Jao Felix clause where you pay, have to pay silly money for him because someone else got him for 20. They bought him like for 20. He, he, I think he's like 22, 23. He's really young. Now they've got another 100 million player because that's the buyout clause. I was looking at him. Didn't get him either. 
now who knows who we are going to get the old survivor series fun man the sting one still give, that's what i'm saying dude like a bunch of survivor series matches just fun there's no need for storyline there's no nothing it's just good old fashion old school survivor matches which is just fun didn't have to necessarily have a storyline some of them had a storyline that is fine some of them just didn't it was it was like a fantasy match up of five players on each side raw versus smackdown raw versus smackdown was ecw women's match men's match tag team survival there were so many combinations they could have gone man but they made war games they put two war games matches and then there's just a bunch of regular matches thing about nxt war games is it was fine because it's like a developmental thing right so war games as is fine like that but make it a ple event a main ple event not an nxt ple event oh they've lost the ball there guardiola gave the ball people will tell you he's a good left back it's not it's not but people will tell you that got lucky they recovered it well in the end so yeah i don't know man i don't know you got to if you're going to go to a place after a long time you got to you got to make the card fun man you can't just you can't just put anything on there yeah. just because you haven't been there a while people will eat it up that's a little disingenuous at least in my opinion Rory looks more Indian than me. Guardiola lays it off. It's a good pass there. Foden passed to nobody. Wonderful. Arsenal have the ball again. So we are almost halfway into the first half. Twenty twenty one minutes. Raya goes long. Find the player. Does not goes out of bounds. Successful passes in the final third. Fifty eight for City, five for Arsenal. That's insane. Five successful passes in the final third. Beaten in all twelve managerial home games versus Arsenal. Hey, hey, Jabba. Hey, I don't know, but why I feel Ange will be someone who drink Coop minus to next level. It's very possible. Ooh, cleared there. What a crap game. One nil, then one one. Oh, okay. Ragmat yesterday. Yes, Rajat. It was. It was easily one of the worst games I've seen. Easily, easily one of the worst games I've ever seen. No doubt about it.
buzzing after win yesterday. The crazy game wasn't was it wasn't it four three? Crazy game. Oh, here we go. Two v three. Odegaard. Is it off? Havertz. Took too long. Look at Diaz and Akanji asking for fouls, man. When he clearly tried to get the ball there. 4-3, yeah. 2003 final one of Australia. Hayden, Gilly, Ponting, Lehman, Bevan, Simmons, Mitchell, Lay. Oh, I forgot about Andy Becker. Lee McGrath. Don't forget how do I beat this team? I'll bat until nine with eight bowling options. Don't forget the heat. that's the game they didn't play. Jason Gillespie, you also could bat. You know what's the funny thing? There was a point in time where all the Aussie batsmen had centuries too. Test centuries. That's how well they could bat. Oh my god, what's going on here? Rico Lewis is coming on. Oh wow. Ake is on the ground. I don't even know when that happened. Rico Luz is coming on though. Wow. Okay. Thought Rico Luz should have got more game time this season, but he has not. He's coming on now. Great finish from Mount. Who was meant to get the uh, W? That would have been a great start from. That's for sure. West Ham. That's it. Rico Lewis on. He is walking off, but I don't know how bad it is. Three one down, bring it back to four three. It was a crazy game. Kanji kick off. This team didn't even have one Gillespie Kasprovich. Ian Harvey. Well, that was a crazy team, man. I, you know what? Our team, we had good batsmen, but bowlers, I don't know. I think the bowlers were better than us, to be honest. But uh, to be completely frank, uh, that was a crazy team to play, man. Yeah, how are we supposed to fight for the title race? Whose backline is injured right now, including goalkeeper? Well, I think Stefan Ortega seems to be doing a good enough job. Oh, another foul there. The viewer is going to get booked. The viewer is going to get booked soon. Lovely bit of skill there by uh, Bernardo. Try to go around him. I mean, I don't know why Kivio is scared of his pace, man. I don't think... I think Kivio is faster than him. Shouldn't be drawing fouls like that. There's plenty of time. He might... He, if he gets a booking too early, it could be even worse for him. MC are winning. It looks like at the moment, yes. But it's nil-nil. That was a crazy team, man. 2003 Australia. Don't forget Brad Hogg as well. Brad Hogg was in the team, Evan. Adley Hogg, one of my favorite bowlers. Left arm Chinaman spin. Kudos was a prick to the ball boy and Phillips flipping off their supporters. Shocking. Phillips has had a rough 18 months, man. He went from being very uh, sought after player to barely getting any game time and not being rated high enough by the team that bought him then he got injured then he never played any football then he went to the world cup then he didn't play any football didn't play any football back at the beginning of the season got loaned off to west ham he's had a rough 18 months for sure
Yes, I forgot Hog. They had Haddon and Hodge sitting out. Just had a crazy team. They had a crazy team. In the test team, when uh, Brad Hogg wouldn't be in the test team, they had uh, Stu McGill. Stuart McGill. Crazy. And don't forget Justin Langer. It was a nightmare, man. It was a nightmare. They should have won more World Cups, if anything. Yeah. He was going for him. I'm glad we then. Phillips, right? He's been a rough 18 months, man. I see, I understand it. I understand. Not that I care. He's a Leeds player. So I don't really care enough to sympathize with him. But you can just imagine, like, as a professional, having the 18 months you've had, right? Feeling all giddy that City is buying you. And then you don't even get a play. Basically, you don't get to play. Oh, here we go. All right. I'm not quite sure why he cut it back there, but he did. Odegaard. Then why chips it at back post? Javier brings it in. Jesus fakes one. Shoots. Goes wide. For 2003 World Cup, pointing for the selectors to add Andrew Simons, the World Cup score, and you know what he did, score two important hundreds and 18 semi-final. That's, see, that's the thing, man. That's the thing. you got to fight with the selectors, dude. Our selectors, we just, you know, we, we love the people who have ads. Ads, marketing ability, this is what we like. When it comes to the big games, we choke. Instead of rotating players, giving them a chance, being brave enough to take out players that are established to put new ones, we almost never do that. Man. That's the sad part. We always pick golden boys, Shaw, Gill, Coley. It's always golden boys we chase, man. Not saying they're bad or anything, they're very consistent, but I'm just saying we never ever are afraid to take off take them out you know especially back in the day man i remember around this time the indian cricket team they barely made any changes dude. you know barely anyone could get a, a look in long enough to make any difference to the national team nowadays at least i feel like you're getting more chances but back then i mean i don't know for how many years i saw the same batting line of sevak tendulkar ganguly dravid i don't know how many years in a row i saw it then Kef, Yuvraj, Harbhajan, uh, what was it then? Kumble, Naira, Zahir Khan. I, I think I just named the entire 11 players in, in probably the same order they batted in. Took so long to break through and not give people chance. Then they gave, I remember when they gave they would give bowlers a chance more than batsmen back in the day for obvious reasons, obviously. I mean, look at the batsmen we had. Uh, I remember when we had that tour with Lakshmi Pati, Balaji and uh, Irfan Khan. Sorry, Irfan Patan. And uh, Irfan Patan was swinging the ball, man. Oh, As soon as he lost his swing, it became disastrous. That was one person I really, really wanted to do well in our team something about him he was aggressive he was fiery he had swing he was left-handed just didn't work out man boring match you're not creating anything it doesn't matter dude it only takes one attempt it takes one attempt for the floodgates to open Nitesh. hi guys Nathan watched Sancho versus Bayern I did not dude I did not do anything I I, I didn't watch I have not watched a single sporting event in the last two weeks not one sporting event of any kind. IPL, football, cricket, internationals, nothing. The only thing I've watched has been wrestling. And that too, I haven't watched that in over 10 days either. The first match I watched, full 90 minutes of, of any sort on TV, was yesterday's United match. I haven't seen once. Oh, oh, that was horrible. Who was that? Kovacic? Oh, no. Is it going to happen? Jesus, he's being greedy. He's being greedy. He's going to lose the ball. Too greedy there. Havertz, 
hospital pass to give you a pointless one offside. Havertz absolutely panicked there. Absolutely panicked there with that silly pass. Who was that? That was Kovacic, wasn't it? Yes. Kovacic with the hospital pass. Wasn't decisive enough, unfortunately. Do we have the guts to say the leader and captain like War to tell him to get retired in ODIs like Australia did with War and Padio to make Ponting cap? No, we don't, dude, because they don't want they don't want to ruffle the feathers. Now nah? there's there's too much marketing power in cricketers nowadays. There's so much uproar, dude. Look look how much uproar there is between the best example is Hardik and Rohit. They are not even some of the best, you know, compared to imagine the players we had 20 years ago. Hardik and Rohit Sharma, with all due respect. Doesn't even come close to them. And keep in mind, back then there were no power plays. Back then, you know, the fielders could be put anywhere. You know, it wasn't strategically made to favor batsmen, you know, with the power plays. You could put your fielders anywhere for every delivery if you wanted to. Not, you know, two people in the circle and all that stuff. Like, back then to score runs was difficult, man. It was, you know, you had to earn every run, really. Nowadays... Power play one, only two fielders outside. Like they, they, they're trying to make uh, batting more attractive, and I understand that. But if you're going error to error, uh, the batsmen we had had no power plays, no batting advantages, and they played really well. We went from having no double hundreds until Sachin to having single players have three, three double hundreds. But that's because of how they, because of ODIs and power plays. Otherwise, for how long? For for anyone who's a cricket enthusiast, how long did Saeed Anwar have the the highest score in ODIs? 192. See, I remember them. 192, uh, 189 was uh, Sachin before 186 was uh, Sanat Jaisuriya. I think 183 was uh, Saurav Ganguly. Someone hit a 170, but I forgot who it was. Rahul Rawat was like 150 something like like as soon as they started uh, making these changes in cricket which you could say for entertainment aspects made the sport better the difficulties also reduced right it became it became much more stressful to be a bowler instead of it being more balanced so <laughs> Nayan Mongia yeah, yeah I did not forget him at all I wish I wish he was that's one player I wish didn't play in the World Cup. Oh uh, no offense. I'm sure he earned his spot, but man, we could have done with a lot better. Quite honest. Dinesh Mongia as well, don't forget. He used to be a part-time bowler. Could have done. We, we listen, man, we walked into an absolute bus so that 2003 uh, 2003 cricket. Australian side was was different level, man. Simple as that. No excuses. It's a different level. And there is no doubt that losing Tendulkar on duck in the finals affected us as well. What floodgate? Who's going to score for Arsenal? No, I mean for... I'm saying it, it could open the floodgate for anybody. I don't know who's going to score. I'm just saying if if someone takes the lead, then the opposition has to start being more attacking because they're both in a title race right next to each other. That's what I mean. Yeah, Nathan, please do. I build from Tuesday onwards, dude. Tuesday onwards. Tomorrow I still have my family here and then moving forward, we'll do IPL for sure. Look, you are destined to lose when you play Eric Dyer despite having Kim and Jay and Upamikan who like names in defense. Still don't understand that Eric Dyer thing, dude. But listen, man. I don't have my coaching badges. Apparently, you need them to tell you that Eric Dyer is better than them. So that's all I'll say about that. Don't forget one bowl and the quality of bowling power plays were there within 15 or 20 or 3. Yeah. I think I think it I think it became a, I think it became a lot more difficult, man. A lot more difficult for bowlers at least over the years. Timing of IPL is very nice. I can watch the match eating evening snacks and watch Club. Yep, that is true. Do people even know the quality of size anyway in Zimbabwe? Well, Zakaria, here's the thing, right? There's a lot of 
See, it's all age related when it comes to sports, Zakaria. I'll tell you something I've learned from experience. No one is going back in time to watch a random game of cricket, dude. Let's be honest. It, it's one thing to say, okay, I do this for football. Oh, I watched the 99 final on uh, uh, ManchesterUnited.com or whatever. Maybe you did that, man. And if you did that, that's great. But no one's going to watch random, random matches from a time when they didn't watch uh, cricket. That's just the top and bottom of it. Like, Inzuma Mulhak, uh, Yusuf Johanna, or as people will call him nowadays, after he converted, he was a Catholic, Muhammad Yusuf. It's... Very age related, my friend. Sports is very age related. No one is going back in time to watch random cricketers play cricket. Too. Let's be honest. I know there are people who love sports, but no one loves sports to that level. You're just going to pick like random players to watch a past match. And in Zaman Mullah was six runs away from being from beating Javed Mehta as the top ten. Top, uh, top most run scorer in test matches. He, you know what he did in his last ball before he got out? He went out down the track to hit a six in his last innings as a test match. Because that's the way Inzamam Hulhak used to used to play, uh, used to bat. That's how it is. Honestly, absolutely stupid. Get the runs, come down the pitch, smash it, do what you want. But that's what he did. That's how he got out. Six runs or seven runs to spare, if I'm not mistaken. That was a crazy ball that looked like it was going to go. Yeah, it was definitely going to go in. Um, Raya being very dramatic there with his little dive. Ooh, that ball went high. That ball went high. Great control there by Jesus. Rice with an absolute. I don't know what that was, but that was terrible. Yeah. Said Anwar, Muhammad Yusuf, Moin Khan. Uh, well, who else was there? Uh, Yasser Hamid. Yasser Ahmad. Ahmed, sorry. No, wait. Am I saying that right? Yasser is something. Yasser Ahmad. Ahmed, no? And obviously, Vakar Yunus, uh, Shoaib Akhtar, and obviously, Wasim Akram. And Umar Gul, Danish Kararia. So it's a time related thing, man. I, I couldn't tell you one I couldn't tell you one Pakistan player anymore. I couldn't. Pakistan and Sri Lanka, I couldn't tell you one. That's how little cricket I've watched over half since the pandemic. You think honestly KKR got a chance? I think anyone has a chance, man. It's a matter of stringing together some wins, dude. Momentum is everything in IPL. Games are coming in thick and fast. Anything's possible, man. Look at look at Delhi. Delhi. Every year we wonder when Delhi is going to even come close to sniffing a title, dude. They never do. They buy players. They buy who they want. They go, oh, we got these players this year, these players that year. Lose nine games in a row. Finish dead last. Today they scored 192 comfortably against CSK, who's always a contender for the IPL. Anything can happen, it's just momentum, it's all momentum, dude. 20 overs matches are, are just full of momentum, momentum swings. Like that 50 over World Cup final is the best example, right? We had it right there, Mohamed Shami, it's gonna happen, didn't happen, basically. What, was, what about that other match? What was the Afghanistan versus somebody, right? Was it Australia only? They had it right there, right there for the taking. Momentum swung and the rest is history, dude. What was the Afghanistan was South Africa? The winner goes to the net, to the semifinals, something like that. They had it in control and then they absolutely lost it. What were they like six down? You only had to take four wickets to get to a semi-final spot, a first time ever. 
one of those ones man if if a 50 over match can have that kind of momentum imagine how much a 20 over match does i've seen people saying kohli and rohit are bigger cricketers than vaughn bigger cricketers maybe all round basis but i don't know how you determine that dude they don't even do the same thing like one guy was clearly a bowler and the other two i mean they can bowl but i wouldn't bowl them to do anything dude i wouldn't i wouldn't bowl them in in, in a match against canada quite honestly i don't know how uh, i don't even know how you do that comparison shane one and motaya murli dharan has just by themselves redefined what spinners can do in terms of game changers back then it was just pace 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 body line bowling bouncers pace 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 yorkers and these people go slow down the ball <clears throat> some of the spin i've seen by shane one is ridiculous especially in the ashes pitches where you would use the roughs where the where the batsman used to run and it looked at it would come way out and it looked like it was going right to the wickets but people used to kick it right because it's not pitched in line so it can't be lbw you used to just stick their pad out and take it on the pads now seen i've never seen anyone turn a ball like that since man and i don't think i'll ever see anyone turn a ball like that since literally uses the part of the pitch where the batters run down the rough to to get turn man it's different levels man it's different levels like talk about redefining like virat kohli and and rohit sharma with all due respect with extremely esteemed careers as batsmen and captains and whatever they haven't redefined batting they haven't let's be honest they have not redefined batting shane warne and mutaya mulli taran have definitely redefined what spin can do so i don't know how you do that comparison but i don't know man people people just want to hype up what they want to hype up so it's one of those A Catholics or Protestants, if you don't know, what's the difference? Uh, the religious beliefs are separate, basically, in the test. You're gonna have to Google it for more specificity. Certain thing, a certain uh, Christians believe in certain things. Certain Protestants believe in certain things, and that their 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 belief system is what separates them into a different section of Christianity. Basically, Yasser Arafat, Azhar Mahmud. Abdul Razak that's who I was thinking of that was a very nifty all-rounder Apologies I thought it was Australia I said South Africa didn't I 7 down that's right I said 6 down half time All right nel nel 45 minutes with everything to play for this is going to be a fun one it all got seven down if afghanistan would have won then we would have faced australia in the semi final okay okay got it neither fun fact sachin has more wickets than won in odi ah yes because shane won got a, a lot of bans didn't he it's a lot of cricket then he didn't play any then he didn't get selected makes sense sachin tendulkar if i'm not mistaken he has between 130 and 150 odi wickets doesn't he I think Virendra Sehwag also has around a hundred wickets, because there was a point in time when they used to be the part-time spinners. They would bowl between like thirty and between thirty, uh, between twenty-one and thirty-five overs, if I'm not mistaken. Man, I used to watch cricket like hell, dude. Like genuinely, I used to watch so much sports. That's how I can tell you which which position they batted in, what number they came down, as I remember all these things, but. It's been so long since I've watched cricket the way people watch cricket now that I just enjoy watching cricket for fun, man. Because I can't watch cricket for fun seriously, tennis seriously, wrestling seriously, MMA seriously. I can't watch all of these things seriously, man. Some things you have to watch just for fun. IPL is one of those things for me. It's exciting. It's fast-paced. Okay, if Mumbai Indians win, I I feel extra happy. But if they don't, I still enjoy watching the cricket. So, I can't can't 
can't be that invested in every single sport man you can watch it but you can't be that invested in it it's impossible adam gilchrist shane won sana jay surya these three cricketers changed the the role of their role pro adam gilchrist had so many records that the closest one near him was mark boucher and mark boucher himself was nowhere near those records and unfortunately for people who don't know mark boucher had a serious eye injury and he had to retire which was really sad because you actually see the eye injury because it happened in a live match but yeah boring match listen man it's fun it's a fun tactical match okay there's no goals but it is what it is yeah it is what it is goodness so boring man listen do they got there's a lot there's a lot at stake here with seven games left so you can understand why it's a tight game part time bowlers breed has died in india yeah, because everything everything now is rigid everything is rigid and methodical and uh, less vibes as i like to call it if ponting or callis would have played same number of games as sachin they would have easily had 100 centuries uh maybe ponting i don't know so much dude because ponting had uh, sorry callis i don't know so much because callis had truly had dual responsibilities i i can't think of someone who was Ill- was that level of bowling and elite of a batsman you know like jack callis is not someone that they would bring on to bat i mean bowl he was number 3 at batting and he would always play always bowl his 10 overs man i don't know anyone at that level of a all rounder you know someone's going to have to remind me because jack callis like like someone said redefine their roles uh he's someone i would think of too what a man of the match performance by anthony taylor hello hello mama thank you csk losing and check that in my why would you even want delhi capitals to win this delhi capitals i feel is like everybody's least favorite ipl team why would you even want them to win a game not in india in the world because of rule changes yeah rule changes have affected a lot of things but people don't really recognize that because now it's just more entertaining right it's all about entertainment it, back then it was the art of how you fit in the players you need to fit in for 50 overs now it's more how many people can smash you for out of the ground gilly's my idol stop supporting any ipl team once he retired because of him i was soft con for the aussies oh interesting what was he he was a was he was he the captain of the deccan chargers in the inaugural uh, inaugural season of ipl or was it the kings 11 i can't remember back then it was imran khan kapil dev ian botham ian botham so ian botham also top all rounder but i don't know if imran khan was the level of jack callis like batting wise I don't know man batting wise I don't a couple dev I mean I guess you can't forget that uh, legendary innings against Zimbabwe in which he scored 170 something right we were losing to Zimbabwe in 83 but as consistent as Jack Callis do you think so I don't know I don't know if Imran Khan was consistent with bat and ball as much as Jack Callis I don't know maybe maybe I I don't remember I don't, I didn't watch a lot of Imran Khan and Kapil Dev or Ian Botham but I wonder if they were of that level of consistency who half time IPL watch a lot I'm just saying guys a question to all of you who's that one player that made you piss your pants when they played your favorite they played your favorite franchise know who i didn't like dale stain man ah oh, dale stain was bloody annoying really really annoying deck and charges yes got it right first time won the title with them in second ipl yeah he moved to punjab in 2011 Gilchrist also so devastating as a batsman man. 
rough. Dude, Imran Khan averaged more than 15 batting, less than 25 with the ball in test cricket. For... Yeah, but I'm, we are talking about uh, one days now. Uh, that's clear. We're talking about one days mostly in this case because we are talking about uh, this started with uh, 2003 World Cup. A sad day for me personally. Then we were just sticking to like one days really. I haven't watched them too, but I've heard about Imran Khan so much. Like from Indian, my dad's his friend. Yeah. Uh, as an Indian, we were raised uh, not like Imran Khan in particular because of the India Pakistan rivalry. But yes, he was definitely good from, from everything I've heard. The second half is going to start soon. Yusin and Johnson was the last period of this terror fast bowlers. Shahid Akhtar and Brett Lee was another. Oh, Brett Lee. Speaking of annoying people. Brett Lee was heavily annoying. Heavily, heavily annoying. Have you tried those new lays, um, heart-shaped lays, whatever the hell they're called? Someone told me there is uh, one that is a sweet one. Don't know how much I like that, but yeah. Vasim Akram once asked which bowler you wouldn't bowl to. If you feared most, his reply was Gilchrist. How would have Magra done in 20... Ah, oh, dude, his, his, his line his line, 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 and length bowling would have been devastating. Bro. He also, man, he had to take years off to take care of his wife. Now his wife got diagnosed with cancer and stuff. Ah... Uh, uh, his consistency was line and length consistency was fantastic he would have done well man I think discipline line and length bowling in, in T20 can pay off you know timing the delivery obviously is important but Line and length is, can be really fruitful in, in a limited overs match where a lot of people will try to swing, you know, swing at you. I think he would have done well. He played 2020s, I guess. Yeah, but we are talking about like, I don't know, I, I don't remember. Did he play 2020s? I don't remember playing the IPL, if I'm being honest. Maybe he did. I definitely don't remember though, I can tell you that much. Hey guys, any 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 particular recommendation for any recommendation on Hotstar? An interesting show, are not these masala ones, no I'm not really interested. Anything interesting? Let me know if anyone here watching hot stuff. And I don't want movies, I want seasons just for the record. 
no interest in watching a movie and then not watching anything after that. Let me know. I'm gonna start soon. Won't be another Magrat born Vasim Akram probably. Yes, Magrat played T20 for Australia. He also played first ever T20I international game. Did he? I don't remember him playing. Did he play in the IPL? I don't remember him playing in the IPL at all. I'm sure he retired way before that, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Kung Fu Panda is out. Has anyone watched uh, Kung Fu Panda 4? I've heard people say it's very nice. I think Ponting and Hayden are the only two batsmen who were at number one one of the ranking, rankings in all formats at the same time. Yeah, is that right? Wasn't Jakalis the number one all rounder in tests and ODI at one point of time? Like together? Uh, now even I have to think about this. He played for Delhi Daredevils. Oh. Therein lies the problem. No one remembers anyone that played for Delhi Daredevils. I wonder why aren't many bowlers not bowling 150 plus consistently. I think it's because the coaches discourage bowlers from doing so to prevent injuries. I think that also and I think it's it's much more risky bowling super fast, right? Because all they got to do is, you know, for lack of a, a, a more technical explanation, all they got to do is kind of place the ball and then, you know, it just goes flying through the directions. Especially under power play overs when you have limited fields, fielders outside. I think towards the end, that's why Bradley, you know, was was consist conceding a lot of runs towards the end. His bowling was just all fast, you know, and people used to just like touch it and it just fly to the boundary. Could be that. Could be uh, could be injuries. It could be that for sure. There we go. The players are <coughs> lining up out of the dugout. Substitutes. Johnson, Jack Reedus, Doku, Alvarez, Gomez, Nunes, Oscar Bob. Look at all the players they have on the bench, man. You can easily get more attackers on. I don't know what they're trying to do here. What, what is he trying to prove? I'm not sure. But uh, let's see. Let's see what comes off of it. There are LOL. Australia has 2-3, Pakistan have 3-4, then New Zealand have 2, England have Wood, Archer and Atkinson. Showing Trossard, Trossard is going to come at some point of time onto the pitch. Zinchenko, all he does nowadays is sit on the on the bench, where apparently Kivior is better than him now. So, most of them are injury prone. Who's playing right now? Hyderabad was Delhi? No, so Chennai was at Delhi is going on right now. Not most of them. But I but I've read somewhere that people are discouraged to bowl from fast because uh, bowl fast because they do pick up injuries. I do remember reading that uh somewhere. Not not recently, but I do remember reading that. 30 for, 32 for two CSK six overs. Oh, that's terrible. The required run rate is eleven point four now. God, when am I going to stop yawning? That would be nice. Mumbai is playing KKR tomorrow. (coughs) 
why stones in the bench if he's injured don't understand it it's just precautionary man when they say injured i think nowadays when pep says people are injured you have to just assume pep doesn't want to play them unless he, ha- he has to because i believe haland was on that list of injured people too and haland's also playing he's playing the game so some players he just says they're injured so they don't ask about him so they can just rest up if they come they if they come on the pitch they come on the pitch but i think it's a last resort thing so i think john stones will be substitute number 5 un- unless something drastic happens they're not oh lovely spin there by rico rico lewis made a lovely run in but they didn't take it shot goes just wide i don't know why the one two with rico lewis didn't happen there it was a beautiful move there by rico spins out takes out walk off from this angle that would oh my god that was really close that was really close also former chelsea player scoring against arsenal good move there by rico lewis to <coughs> wood harris 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 roff harris harris roff and archer the most prominent names are come to mind they definitely injury prone pretty sure jofra archer's injury prone wood hari straf i'm not sure yeah those three are only injury prone <laughs> one nil win today don't know maybe afc maybe man city yeah, who knows dude who knows it could end as a, it could end as a draw to be honest hari straf is not injury prone interesting oh what is this look at this look at this madness Gabriel and uh, Haaland I think City are trying to be too fancy man and Arsenal are seeing through it at the moment for the most part they're seeing through their fakes and their little neat passes better for his team if he stays out of injury Yeah like I said I I remember uh, I either heard it on commentary for one or random match a long time ago I read it somewhere but uh, they're not discouraged but apparently there's some relation with trying to generate pace in bowling with the action and the strain on the body so makes sense man because Bradley used had knee did he have knee or did he have ankle issues I forgot but it was definitely from the the way he generated pace to bowl that's for sure because his action was very clean i i can remember it today you know you know guys i used to watch so much cricket at one point of time that i could if the little banner thing that comes there that does doesn't show up back in the day it used to not always be there like it is today they used to show up and get out so the screen was clear i could tell who is bowling just by seeing the bowling action randomly a lot lot of bowlers in different countries i could tell who's bowling based on the action so that was uh, that's how much cricket i used to consume at one point of time that was weird because i could tell who's bowling in case i i didn't see change over or you know i joined in between and over from time to time that's how much i used to watch cricket at some point of time One bowler who was ruined by injury and destined to greatness was James Pattinson. Pattinson made ten wickets during Lakshman Dhanson 2011 Test series. The ankle used to add load of six times of body weight when he used to jump and land by ball. Yeah, he had a clean action, but the pace he generated. And you remember Shoaib Bakhtar's line, uh, run up? He used to basically go down to the boundary. You know, right at the right around where the average bowler bowls, just below that there used to be this always an ad of something, right? Maybe the host host sponsor for the test series or the ODI series. He used to go all the way behind that to start running. But that guy must have burned so many calories just to bowl the 60 deliveries every match let alone all the fielding so the run up was was absolutely preposterous 
I mean, it's easy to be. Oh, here we go. Arteta started with his hands. Better to be easier to want to hear once batters figure you out. It's over for bowlers like Love who haven't played first class. Interesting. Ashar Patel is also a good example of batters finding a bowler out. I got off. Arsenal is not clinical offense today. I'm going to say the same thing I said. I said it in the first half, man. It takes one per, if one team scores, the other team will be forced to attack. Then this game is going to be fun. I don't know if it's going to be due to clinic uh, being clinical or it's a mistake. Oh, Saka's through. Cross comes in. Oh. No, you don't even have to be clinical there. You, you can. It's just, you're just a tapping away from you know. We're just in a tapping away from. You're just a tapping away from, you know, making the game super exciting moving forward. So, yeah. Anthony Taylor. 12th man on the pitch. Yesterday was shambles. It, it was, I was just telling everyone, Gauro, it was easily one of the worst games I've seen in the last three, four years. Easily one of the worst games. Bro, Akta was different because so you're taking injections and all the things you used to do after the match. Yeah. Listen, man, you you know, he's someone else whose body changed over time, dude. And a lot of people, a lot of people say it's because of him working out, but who knows? Who knows what goes on? If we are being completely honest, but I'll never forget the run up to the run up to generate the pace, and he had this like flinging action almost. Who we'll turn completely to the side and like fling it? Oh, good pressure there by Saka. Oh, quick. Havertz is so clumsy, man. Handball by Havertz. He's so, so clumsy. Mount scored, but rest was bad. Yeah, listen. Yeah, Mount scored, dude. But, you know, coming on for 10 minutes after everybody's tired and played a full game. It was Mount's advantage. He did look good, though. Some people on the internet were saying Mount did more in 10 minutes than Rashford did in ET. Difficult to argue with that. Difficult to argue with that, but uh, good finish by Mount as well. That I without we didn't mention that a good finish by Mount. Oh, hopefully he gets some game time. I don't know. Will he get a game time against Chelsea? Oh my God! Can you imagine if Mason Mount scores midweek against Chelsea? Oh, here we go. Rice got his pocket picked. Wins it back. Just puts his foot in there at the right time. Pushes the ball to the Arsenal defender who was double teaming him. They uh, Declan Dice was caught sleeping there though. Kevin De Bruyne, right there on his on his case. My Duolingo streak is up today. I have to do it after the game. I haven't done it this today. Mm. Mm -mm. Should we go for Victor Gyokeres? Uh Didn't he play for Hull City last year, dude? I know, I know he's in whatever, Sporting Lisbon and all. But correct me if I'm wrong, but last year he was in the championship. That's it's you know how this is what I mean by uh, football is so weird, dude. If we went for Victor Gyokeres last season, they'd be like, "What does Manchester United want with a striker from the Championship? He does one season under Ruben Amorim at Sporting Lisbon or wherever the hell he went. Suddenly now, you know he's on a short list of strikers that we could get for a good price. <clears throat> Could have got for a better price, by the way, 
if we bought him straight from the championship team but that is another argument my point is it's so funny one year makes such a difference if if we attempted to buy him while he was at his championship team we would have got we would have been absolutely fuming at the owners he isn't good at the international level <clears throat> last pakistani bowl game me or india nightmares with mohammad amir Holland, who's basically done nothing the whole game. Nowadays, you won't get finished product. But you're missing my point, Gaurav. He wasn't. He wasn't. He was just as raw last season in the championship. I don't know if he was. What we are going to get is a finished product too, because what difference can one year make? Like I said, if we bought him from the championship. all the fan supporters and everyone will be like not happy with the decision but now he's played under amorim for one season not even one season by the way is over in sporting lisbon suddenly he could he could be making a move to whatever club let's say united doesn't take him whatever arsenal whoever i'm just saying it's so funny because within us within one span, within a span of one year going from a championship team to playing well in sporting lisbon and then getting a premier league move no one would have bought him from the championship no top 6 team very interesting very interesting how how the premier league works the mindset of the fans the mindset of the owners and scouts and everything because in my personal opinion i don't think i think if we in fact i think if we got him from the championship we would have been saving money but you know it's one of those ones where this is how it is nowadays what happened to gabi gabi jesus is undercover agent some bro i'm tell that's what i'm trying to tell you dude the, ma- these people said he was kun aguero's next replacement dude he can't even play for arsenal consistently man what was he going to replace kun aguero in doing in, a, in getting an upgraded haircut This is what happens, man. Everyone just brags about Pep's scouting ability. Listen, Gabriel Jesus is a great player, but when I heard when I heard commentators get so high on him and and pundits, Kun Aguero is getting injury prone now. He's getting older. This will be his replacement. He fits like a glove. He keeps the ball. He holds the ball. He passes it well. I'm like, bro, Kun Aguero left, and so did he. I, didn't they leave at the same year? You got Haaland and Alvarez, dude. Like, oh no, what is this? Mistake there by Arsenal. Rodri. That's what you do. You throw yourself and Rodri shoots. He's got enough clutch goals for two seasons. Next, Kun Aguero. He's the next Adebayo. Only terms of style sense. That's what I'm saying, dude. That was the hype, na. He was getting older and getting injured more, Konagwaru. And I remember all the pundits going, "He's next. He's next." Pep has found the next replacement in him. He's going to. He's going to. What do you call it? Nurture him into replacing him soon. Look how he's playing while Aguero was injured. He's scoring these many goals here, that many goals there. Can't believe the hype every time, man. Good point. Game is not too interesting to watch. Yeah, but Rajat, like I said, this game has this game has so much at stake that until this final whistle is done, you have no choice but to watch it. I don't know. Ruben Diaz keeps hugging Akanji and telling him a bunch of stuff during the game. Very interesting. Harland is overrated. He doesn't work hard off the ball. He's not overrated, dude. Sir. So the way I have explained it, at least the way I think about it is, he is very one-dimensional. The thing is, he is absolutely world-class in that one dimension. How many how many teams have has kept Haaland quiet during the season, and he's he's got maybe one goal, maybe he's got one assist. The teams that don't keep him quiet, three goals, four goals, you know, ten goals, ten matches, that kind of thing. But if you keep him quiet, he gets fully nullified, man. 
Foden and Kovacic coming off for Grealish and the Greedy Merchant. Here comes the Greedy Merchant. I swear, Man City has produced the most boring match of the season. Uh, listen, man. I always say, say no to tippy tappy football. He's probably the next Welbeck. Ah, bro. You see Welbeck. He's at third. He's thirty-five years old and scoring goals still, man. He scored today even after two minutes. Look at him. He's age. He's aging pretty well, man. It's funny. After he left Arsenal, he's managed to stay fit a lot better. Even though he's gotten older, it's very interesting. LOL, why people are expecting the open game? This game might decide title. No, I do. I think they were just expecting more of a back and forth battle. I'll, in other words, what Liverpool and Man City did, you know, that kind of back and forth battle. It doesn't necessarily have to be a goal fest, but the battling part, you know. How's my sleeping piece feeling? I'm feeling a lot better, dude. It's about three hours earlier than yesterday's game started. I'm feeling good. Although I did yawn a few times, I've uh, been playing with my niece today as well, so it was quite tiring. My God, look at these tights, dude. He's, he's wearing his tights over his socks, bro. Who does that in football? Don't tell me that's how all the kids do it these days. He's taking out his tights and putting it over the socks. Tommy Asu is coming on, by the way. For people wondering who I'm talking about. That's weird, man. His tights over his socks. Really weird. Haaland's not over it. He's just getting exposed. CR7, arguably the good near 10 years of his career to become so mature to play like a poacher. Haaland just skipped it and now he's getting caught. Again, dude, this is what I'll say. I think he's very one-dimensional, but he's world-class in that one dimension. In terms of what else does he bring? I suppose the truth is not very much at all. Only Haller is finishing. Exactly, he's finishing and is running behind. It's very clinical. What I would call it. Welbeck scoring more often than United. He is. He is. Both teams are playing not to lose Mourinho style. Nathan already babysitting after a chat yesterday. Oh no dude. I have not seen my niece in forever. I don't mind babysitting her. She comes, she comes for a few days every couple of years. But this time it was really extended. Because we went to Bombay. We met all of them there. Then they came to Goa. We met them here. This time it was a little different. We have gone traveling as a family together separately, but we have very different this time. Grealish already been fouled, been on the pitch for two minutes. Oh God, they are bringing on Thomas Pate. Jesus and Haaland are fighting each other. That's, I mean, they are arguing with each other, which is interesting. You saw what Haaland saying? Haaland saying, I replaced you. We won our trouble. All you won was nothing since I've replaced you. No, sorry. You won the charity shield. Apologies. Oh, here comes. Look, Greddy Merchant. <coughs> Rodri. Oh, Rodri passes and falls down. You can't teach Haaland dribbling like Messi or supporter play like Benzema. Exceptionally good at judging opponent's mind like CR7. A coach needs to figure out how to play him rather than changing him. Yeah, well, you know what? Pep's going to be done in 2025, dude. So I don't know what the hell Haaland's going to do. So we're going to find out how long his. His reign of terror is going to end. Everyone was giddy last season. Oh, he's going to score 50 goals easily in the league. Bro, he finished with like 30-something. People get way too gassed, man. People get way too gassed. Seriously. He's going to easily hit 50 goals in the Premier League last season. Bro, he was nowhere near 50 goals at the end of last season. dude. People just get gassed. Oh, said he's going to dominate, dominate. I'm like, okay, man. All right. 92% of the season was dominated by Arsenal. They were leading. It's just all narrative driven, man. 
narratives too many narratives the season is scored even less goals just just a bunch of narratives all into barca here we go possible someone said harlan so good at finishing finished his career 23 Nathan, either we win or let Arsenal. I don't want to draw. I don't want to see happy farewell ending of Klopp. But see, man, that's what I'm trying to say, right? Like the only really bad outcome is if Arsenal lose. I think City can still easily go win the next seven games. Jesus been booked. I think Liverpool can easily win the next seven games. But I'm not sure if Arsenal can win the rest of all their games. That's why an Arsenal win was what I was hoping for. A draw would still be better because the title race is more interesting. But quite honestly, then Liverpool just has all the momentum. No one cares about Klopp. Complain of winning. Give me a second, guys. I'll be back. I'm back. Final twenty twenty five minutes, twenty three minutes left. So half of the second half is over. Still nil nil. Lots left in the balance here. Bernardo Silva, Ruben Diaz. Yeah, total dude. But there were people like there were people on social media, like content creators, going, "Oh, he's gonna easily smash fifty goals in the league." Do Do you know how many people have scored fifty goals total in a season? Plenty of players. Plenty of players have done that. Yeah, he, people were saying, "Oh, the way the way he's scoring in the league, he's gonna hit fifty goals." Didn't come close, but again, people will have you believe what they want. This season, he scored even less goals. Where is where is the gas and where is the hype? Nowhere. Can't find him. Can't find the gas because it's not there. Came back faster than Masia. <laughs> Good thing. Klopp, the OG excuser. Can make much more beautiful excuses than Stay Mac. Poor Stay Mac. Just getting roasted every day now. You know what? I I don't even honestly think you can blame blame uh, Stay Mac. The people we all should be blaming is the Is the people who are in charge of infrastructure from of sports in a grassroots level? Because this was a very bad time for a coach to let a very good golden crop of players down, and this wouldn't have happened if we had better grassroots. Because we would have kept getting better as a country in the sport. We would have been producing many more players. So if these players don't do well, we have replacements. Those are the people that are really at fault for this. Nathan has also scored sixteen goals for Liverpool this season. Get super salty. Remember the draw at Anfield? That was way before they were in win in a title race. What did he say? Uh, God, I forgot what he said. He said, um, "What did he say? What did he say?" Um, ah, only one team came to play football today. I was like, "Yeah, 
good for you how many points you got doesn't matter doesn't matter if you end up with the same points we end up with because that's all the points you're going to take home after this match and you playing football so go cry in your pillow tonight because nobody cares nobody cares mark nelly warming up trossard warming up jesus going off speaking of which <clears throat> City fans are clapping for him. That is nice to see. There you go. One of the clutch players for Arsenal, Leandro Trossard. He's come on. People are blaming our coach for the loss, but what a coach can do when they don't have players who actually can play football. Javi Martinez, my mother has not forgiven me yet for not signing for Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Well, it's okay, dude. As long as he has money in his bank account, his mom not forgiving him is fine. But I can't wait to recover once. Uh, once my family leaves. City fans doing what? They're clapping for Jesus. Uh, as he got subbed off you know some of them the few i could see coach spent 250 million has take blame he spent 250 million in what my father's also not forgiving me for not doing engineering only pains I love how parents think you can just do a subject, you know. You, he didn't become an engineer. Like, like it's the most easiest thing in the world to do. He didn't become an engineer. He didn't become a doctor. Who's that footballer? Footballer who said I thought they, there is just one club in Manchester and I was signing for them. It turned out to be City. Well, tell you these people even, even, even just to get more attention. You no, know, they take a dig at United instead of just celebrating their own signature. And signing of a new club, people are so so hurt that we have been doing so well in the last thirty years that nowadays people just take shots at it because it's a fashionable thing to do. Harland jumps, gets nothing but air. Each a cast Anthony Onana. Yeah, we were talking about India, Arnab. I was, even I was wondering why you were naming a, a United players. We are talking about the Indian cricket team. I mean football team. Kevin De Bruyne attempting to pump up the crowd. My god, I don't know what that was by David Raya. Seriously, that take by David Rai was was 
very lucky there was no city players there. I gave up on Indian football a long time ago, me too. Saka literally playing right back whole, whole t- the whole time. Jokerez would cost us more, but as, as you said, question is how well proven he is. No, my thing is if we were going to buy him, just buy him from the championship. That's all. Because there's no way his, his skill level has improved so much within the ne- last nine months. Where he goes from championship team to Lisbon to United. No way in nine months he's improved that much. Lucky Rayano City player was exactly. <coughs> De Bruyne. Ready Merchant. Shoots. Goes to the sky. Good job. Good job, Dopo. And United need a proper C- a CDM like Germany. A CDM like Germany can add more structure to team by providing solid assists and doing routine tackles. Us, bro, don't forget. <laughs> uh, us, bro, United, don't forget us. Only one shoe in the world, and there's no one like him. Here we go. Saka off. Oh no, that's horrible. Martinelli on. This is bad. So Nathan, then we have to go for cheap deals, less wages. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. If 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 he were, that that's what apparently we are going to do. We are going to uh, target people who have one year left on their contract. Apparently. Who knows? Ruben Diaz is continuously going to Akanji and now Rico Lewis to tell them something about their defending. No goals, wow, yep. Support like fighting with Gaurav, I got confused. Yes, great, but did it get you up any good to Adviria with what money, dude? With what money? As you can see, uh, if Arsenal and Man City stay as it stands, Man City will be three points behind Liverpool and Arsenal will be two points behind Liverpool. David Raya got a yellow card. Right back replaced by left wing. Sariba is holding his head. Odegaard, Martinelli, Ooh. what cheap signings would you suggest? See man, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the contract scenario is, but when I, I read last month, I read we are not either looking for cheap, cheaper players or unknown players. Uh, and the other thing we're doing is we're looking for established players with one year left on their contract. So those are the people we're looking at. So Liverpool are going to win the league, possibly Tolomba. Possibly. I'm making a bold assumption now, okay. United need to bench Bruno. I know I might get hate for saying this is stats counter what I say, but still United midfield gets gawked <laughs> on counters. I don't have any hopes for our defenders. Yeah, but can I be honest with you? I don't think that is Bruno because Bruno might be just doing what the manager tells him to do. See, this is the one thing, no, that I'm very nervous to discuss about when I'm talking about a player. We we blame players for why they perform bad and stuff. But in reality, it could just be the fact that the manager has just asked them to play a certain way. That's it. Oh, what was that? My God, Guardiola almost gave the ball to Havertz, literally. Ah, 
آسترال ببینید چپ بزن دیگه That's the ten minutes left. Oh no, all in through. Grealish. Links it. Back post, Grady Merchant goes out. So we are midfielder gets bypass we need 10 midfielders our formation must be 0 10 0 yeah no sakai south after winning the premier league this season loop ball in straight to ortega give me a second guys i'll be back go again unfortunately about that guys something i have to do alan mr sitter how hilarious would it be if i sat through the whole game and then missed the only goal in the game a sleeping beauty is back in action oh no no dude no not quite Someone is calling me while I'm live. Ooh. That's exactly why he's the worst left back in the league. He had all the time in the world to pick the pass and he still gives it waist high to an Arsenal player. Oh, what a ball by Odegaard. Cross square it. Oh, Trossard. Trossard had to square it earlier. Horrible. Jack Relish is here. Nathan is literally nodding in his sleep with his eyes closed. Where? No, dude. I actually got up. I had to go put my glass away. I tend to. I, I, I'm very OCD about these things. Harib, don't worry. You will, all will appreciate me at the night of the Champions League final. 
Rafa Silva contract ending Nathan Tosin from Fulham. Oh, you know what? That guy. Apparently, we are, we are interested in that fellow. What's his name? Adaraibo or something. He has, a, he has like a long surname. Uh, Wilfred and Didi. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want Wilfred and Didi at all. My assumption is ESL will start from next season right from August. But that would be disastrous still. Someone special? Who's special? An old aged Mumbai Indian fan died after being attacked by a CSK fan. Really? Oh, how sad is that? It's just cricket, man. Seriously, people are too... People have too much free time in their life, man. Where they start doing mad things like this. You stop lying, we're watching live on stream. No, I literally went to put my glass away, dude. I'm being serious. I am yawning a lot for sure, but I'm not sleeping, dude. Not today, at least. Definitely done that before on stream. I somehow managed to not sleep at all yesterday, which was a miracle. Oh, the new CL format is a yes. Interesting. Okay. Man, rivalry over domestic league is foolish. Dude, killing anyone over, over sport is foolish. Foolish, dude. Foolish. One goes to jail and one's lost his life. No winners, only idiots. No, no, Nathan just died because he does. He didn't even doze off for once. Oh wow, Harlan's holding his head now. It's like, oh no, why haven't scored yet? Why haven't scored yet? Oh god, I really wish I could stop yawning. It's it's kind of frustrating right now. I sleep like a log these days and still I'm tired, man. A life of sleep deprivation is horrible. Yeah, why didn't he put it across? Exactly, that's exactly what we said, Mikhail. Why didn't he square it? Thank you. Should have definitely squared it there. I don't like it when we zoom into their faces to see them spit. It's very weird. But okay. Yeah, see? Mikhail Arteta is saying, why didn't he square it? That I really thought the same thing. He should have squared it for sure. Sorry, my bad. CSK fans celebrating Rohit's wicket was attacked by MI fan. And he's like, Either way, it's equally stupid. It doesn't change the stupidity, unfortunately. So obsessed. Really need someone who can massage you if you know, you know. Yeah, I would have. A, I would really love a, sh a shoulder massage right now. Don't remind me, dude. That's depressing. Oh boy, Alvarez is warming up. What is he warming up for? It's eighty-nine minutes. And look at this Gabriel guy stretching in front of the the physio. What is it going to be? Five minutes extra time. Yeah, keep throwing water on your face too. That's not going to help anyone. That's more stupid people. Lives are not that cheap, bro. It's about sports, man. You know when you do it to protect your family for disputes, your loved ones, your wife, your children, I get it. But it's a fucking cricket team, you, you send yourself to jail and you send someone you rob someone of their life. So stupid. Giving your shoulder massage, you need strong arms. Not gonna lie, man, your shoulders have gifted genetics. A little gym can make them so bold. I'm not joking. Yeah, listen, dude. You know, it's possible, but if I'm being honest with you right now, I'm just stiff as a board, dude. And I don't think gym is going to make me less stiff. Probably more stiff. Smashing the weights. Makes your 
compounding of muscle even furthermore. Oh my god, if that greedy merchant scored, I would have cried. It was five minutes extra time. I just saw it. Four minutes left. Gabriel, dude. Oh my god. How how is that? How is how is that? How is that not a foul funny enough? He, and uh, Gabriel is telling him to stop diving and he's telling him to just shut the F up. Oh. Three and a half minutes left. Person who died was an old age uncle. Do yoga, it's magical. Our drive goes long. Three and a half minutes. So long it goes out of bounds. Brilliant. Just give Man City the ball again. Fantastic. Three minutes left. William Saliba might be player of the match apparently. Fell to the ground. That's mad, man. What is Ben White doing? He just fell to the ground. He also five kilometer sprint. It's magical. How is that gonna help me get? A, uh, uh, how is that gonna make me feel relaxed? That's just gonna make me want another massage. Oh boy, that header. That could have been a problem. Great take down there by Rice. Job keep and play. Now they're going long. Who's there up front? Havertz, not that threatening. I think Arsenal win the league. Not based on this, dude. Not based on this, Jay. I did yoga for a week and my spine got straighter than a gender, you know. Oh, two minutes left. Yesterday's game and today's game, we only have seen two goals, and out of those two goals, we saw none of them in this match. Get a goatee. So why is your views not going up? Who knows, Jay? I don't stress about these things, man. When this is my time, it'll be my time. Five kilometer sprint. So you say he's going to turn into an Indian Odana. Oh, they're going to be. I'm going to enjoy. Before I pass out and sleep, I'm going to enjoy these post match conferences. I'm going to enjoy it. Indian Onana ranting, African Onana. <sighs> Final minute left. Okay. Come on. Are we going to see some drama like yesterday? Relish passes it to nobody. Declan Rice trying to get the ball into the goal. Long ball. Ooh, good defending there by. Good defending there by uh, Guardiola and ooh, it is a goal kick. Thought it might be a corner because YouTube is focusing on bots. <laughs> Final few seconds. Someone on Twitter said Lamine is Europe's finest star, and I just told him he's not from Europe. Am I wrong? Well, he he is Moroccan descent, but I guess he is European through naturalization. I suppose if that's the correct term. Yes, full time. They give each other a hug. Probably knocked each other out of the league title. Bloody idiots, both of y'all. Good job. Oh, that, that game was boring as hell. I'm not gonna lie. Back to back watch alongs, back to back boredom is what it is, man. You only have one life to live. This is not how I would want to spend it. Anyway, guys, I will see you on Tuesday, most probably for the IPL match. I'm off to recover from my three week bender. 
take care thank you for joining me do share we are this close to 1150 subscribers actually we're two subs away believe it or not we're very very close what a boring match of football it was it was i'm not gonna lie Nitesh. i was very excited for the match my family left early i thought the watch long was gonna be lit but unfortunately two watch alongs two boring matches can't do anything about it he doesn't look like Moroccan, but I agree. I mean, he's, he's a, probably a mix of other things as well. I don't know. He could be a Berber uh, from... He could come from the Berbers of uh, Morocco. I'm not sure. Is Pep a fruity by by hate them chemistry, man. Go IPL stream. Yeah, two subs away. Yes. Uh, just an update for anyone who's interested. CSK needs 78 runs from 29 balls and they only have 5 wickets left. 16 runs is the required run rate. Seems difficult in my opinion. But I am off. This is what happened when you play, when both teams play four center backs. Uh, maybe, maybe. Um, I will see you guys on Tuesday. Not sure what the game is. Let's, let's see what the game is. Might be a boring one. I don't want to say I'm coming on Tuesday and then not showing up. RCB, LSG. TBD. Let's, say, let's put it at TBD for now. Most likely the IPL streams will start soon though. Congratulations, Clock First Farewell Trophy. I do like, share, and uh, sub and comment, guys. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, enjoy your Easter weekend still, what's left of it. And have a good week. Have a good week tomorrow. CSK is not kick here, so they're going to lose. Uh, take care, take care. You guys take care too. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Good night and uh, sleep well and have a good week up ahead. See you in the next one.